If you gotta kill them, you gotta kill them. Hey, I got no problems with that. But Palestinian women and children are taking refuge in a UN designated compound. Come on. Oh, it was an accident. Sorry. It doesn't matter any. Um, they go in, they obviously get involved in street fighting. Hamas throws more and more resources at it, more casualties are caused by the Israeli using very heavy weapon systems, firing indiscriminately onto Palestinian women and children. And you know what the body count is now. So Israel has actually lost this war. Interesting. General Andrew Leslie. High-ranking liberal, he wants to be an MP, but uh, there he was answering a question about Israel. He accused the IDF, accused them of firing on women and children in Gaza, directly contradicting Justin Trudeau's point of view. Straight talk contributor Sarah McIntyre is here to discuss. He, um, I mean, he won't back down on this. He's, mm -hmm. he's sent out, uh, actually, a, a written statement. This is what I said, I stand by it. He's good on Hamas, get him, kill him if you have to. But then he implies that the Israelis if anything, targeted. They didn't mm. care. Women and children, hey, we're not going to apologize. We'll do what we want to do. Yeah, I mean, he basically said that the IDF, which is the Israeli Defense Forces, indiscriminately fires upon Palestinian women and children. Um, my response to that is, if that was the case, this would have been a seven-hour conflict as opposed to a seven-week conflict. Mm. Everybody knows that the Israeli Defense Forces do their best to try and avoid civilian casualties, but it's a conflict. Um, so that's that's going to happen. And this is something, you know, this is a star candidate for the Liberal Party. Um, he is the advisor to Justin Trudeau on all things international. Mm. Um, so this is going to prove very problematic, not just for Andrew Leslie, but also for Justin Trudeau. Yeah. And there's two aspects to this. One is what he actually said, and the second is that it contradicts his, his leader's apparent point of view. There's an implication here, though, and the implication is that the Israeli army, which is overwhelmingly made up of, of Jews, somehow is of less moral standing and fiber and quality than other armies. They're not trying to kill women and children. I, I've spent enough time with the Israeli Defense Forces as a journalist, Hezbollah wives there for, for, for weeks, to know mm -hmm. they don't enjoy doing this. Mm -mm. Uh, if Hamas hide weapons, and we know they did in hospitals, in mosques, in UN areas. Now, sometimes mistakes do happen, but you tell people to leave. If they're not allowed to or they won't, you have to target those areas. The Israelis have a, have a duty to defend their own people. He doesn't seem to have any empathy with that. No, not, not, not at all. And in fact, during the first ceasefire, there was video that came out from uh, journalists that were embedded in Gaza that showed um, Hamas building uh, rocket launchers right in residential areas mm. purposefully and launching rockets towards Israel from these areas. We know that this is a tactic that Hamas uses routinely, hospitals, schools, residential areas. And the real strategic objective for the Israeli defense uh, forces is to take out those command centers and mm. to take out those armed forces. So, um, you know, they, this is the only army in the world that sends out notices to civilians that we are going to be attacking this area. Please leave this area. It's going to happen at, in this particular time frame. Please be sure to be out of this area. So, um, obviously, he's made these comments off the cuff. He didn't think that they were going to be recorded. Uh, and yet, as you say, he stands by them. He says he stands by the totality of his statements uh, in response to this question during a roundtable he was hosting. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see if his leader also stands behind those comments. Well, let's get to that. And, and by the way, uh, if NATO, for example, in, in Bosnia, Serbia had acted in such a way, there would have been fewer casualties. We know we've seen evidence of it, of the so-called knock on the door. It's a, a loud, it, it's, it's a form of missile that lands on the roof of an apartment, say, but won't do any real damage. And it's telling people, leave. You yeah. have 10 minutes and then we, we bomb properly. No other country has acted in such a way. Now, Trudeau, who plays a game on this issue, just as Ignatieff did. Ignatieff told one, one group in, in, in French um, that the Israelis were committing war crimes. He told mm -hmm. another group in English, I'm not losing any sleep about what Israel is doing. Justin Trudeau, I think trying to follow Harper's lead, has said, I support Israel's actions in Gaza. Will he fire this man? Will he suspend him? Will he criticize him in public? Well, he's a star candidate. He was handpicked by Justin Trudeau. So it, it's going to be difficult for him to then just push him aside. And mm. I don't think Andrew Leslie is the type of person that would be pushed aside quite quietly no. either. Uh, so this is the problem when you pick star candidates. You, uh, they end up feeling like they've got a lot more free reign on any number of topics. Mm. And so speak their mind and not necessarily uh, the party line. So Justin Trudeau, I think he has to be able to distance himself somewhat uh, from Andrew Leslie's comments. 
because otherwise he's going to be facing a whole barrage of, of questions, not just from media, but also from the Jewish community, from people in Mount Royal, uh, you know, from different writings saying, so what are you saying, that Israel's purposely targeting civilians during their, their operations in Gaza? Mm. Realistically, though, there could be a couple of writings that he may be, be affected by, by this, but mainstream media, the media party, if you like, they're not really talking about it yet. We, we, this has happened many times before mm -hmm. where the only ones talking about it, sometimes they have to follow us. Mm -hmm. but in this case, so far, they haven't. No. I'm sure Trudeau is doing what he usually does. His people are speaking to, to various editors and saying, oh, look what he said. He did condemn Hamas. This is a non-story. It's Sun News try, trying to make this up. They're now going after the person who asked the question because she's a Tory staffer. It's the nature of the question, not the nature of the questioner that is relevant here. They're trying to spin it. It might succeed. I, you know, I don't think so. I mean, we can only have so many of these um, examples before people start saying, okay, wait a minute, this guy uh, has been so far given a free pass mm. once, twice, three times. Uh, this is an international conflict. It's, it's one that Canada has taken a very principled position under Stephen Harper. What would Justin Trudeau do? And, and this, that's an important question because we may see this exact uh, conflict happen again in two years' times once Hamas has rearmed itself, has no rebuilt uh, those tunnels, has been re refunded uh, by Qatar, and, and uh, you know we could see uh, Hamas again shelling into Israel as they're facing uh, an election. So it, it's, it's a very uh, poignant question to be asking this, someone that wants to be prime minister. This where is a would very you good be? point. This is an essential point because yeah. here is a man who could be in charge of defence. I mean, yeah. It's quite plausible he could be defence minister. Even the Egyptians and the Saudi Arabians were reluctant to condemn Israel's actions because they know how Hamas behave. Here is a man in Trudeau and a senior advisor on military affairs who could be in power, God forbid, but could be mm -hmm. in power when another conflict takes place. What would they do? Abandon Israel, support Hamas, uh, play into the hands of, of a, a newly formed Islam Islamic coalition? This is very worrying. Yeah, or, or perhaps do nothing, which is probably uh, the more likely option, I would suggest, under Justin Trudeau. Which is, Trudeau, in effect, abandoning Israel. Which is abandoning Israel and its right to defend itself, mm. would be, which would be the first time uh, in, a, in a departure for, for Canada. Uh, so, you know, it's not that implausible that Justin Trudeau could be prime minister. It may be a minority government. Um, and this would be the logical foreign affairs minister mm. or even minister of national defense Probably Minister of National Defense yeah. would be uh, the hand-picked Andrew Leslie. So the, the 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 content of his comments shouldn't just simply be dismissed that it was at a round table. And, mm. you know, he also said that Hamas are terrorists and that they should be killed. Well, it's also a two-party conflict. Israel is the other side. It is the only democratic country surrounded by people that surrounded by countries that want to eradicate it. Um, and it has a right to defend itself. Mm. And uh, I don't think questioning its military strategy, saying that uh, they attack Palestinian women and children, um, is something that we want to ever see coming from a Minister of National Defense in Canada. Well said. Thank you very much. Thanks.